You took it by force from me in New York City. The Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's the Wrestling Life. It's episode 350, second week of October 2023. I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. And as always, so many things we can't talk about on the first and the only wrestling podcast. Uh, I was waiting for you to welcome your crab fans, and it didn't oh. happen. So. <laughs> I, I, for, I forgot, but uh, let me let me remedy that and just say once again, welcome back, crab fans. Thanks. Thanks. We don't necessarily have to do that every week. I just was waiting for it, and then I wasn't there. I, I was like, oh, I guess I got to talk. It's episode 350. I, I should be welcoming the crab fans on such a momentous occasion. <laughs> sure. Uh, hey, there was a WWE pay-per-view last weekend. This is where you've survived yet another Tuesday night war. <laughs> we are veterans of the Tuesday night war. Uh, big happenings in wrestling this week. Tony Khan has had a normal week tweeting a normal amount of times about uh, a normal amount of subjects. And uh, yeah, all that stuff's happening. Uh, I guess we can begin with WWE car. Uh, what did you think of uh, Fastlane? It was a five match show, and uh, of all the shows I've ever seen, this was uh, certainly one of them. Yeah, um, I is it safe to say that the the most memorable part is uh, Jay, Jay Uso and Cody's press conference? Well, to me, it is because I had to sit there and watch it. Uh, <laughs> wrestling companies two weekends in a row got me transcribing press conferences where I wasn't at the press conference. I was sitting at home and was somehow in the best position to cover the press conference from the house. These need to stop. <laughs> they need to go away. But yeah, I. Uh, Cody Rhodes and uh, Jey Uso were drunk at a press conference. It certainly appeared. Or yeah. were give, they were giving the impression that they were drunk. And uh, Jay was way more intoxicated than Cody was. Or that's the impression that they were giving. Yes. Um, other than that, yeah, I thought the, it was fine. And as you said, only five matches. So that's all right. <laughs> a lot um, of commercials. Oh, yes. They, they made up for it. We're not... This was a Nick Khan production. Mm-hmm. We got our we got our sponsored match. Um, yeah, it was. Uh, what what food item was uh, sponsored for Mysterio's match? Oh, what was it? It wasn't wasn't cinnamon toast crunch. That was the mania match, right? Uh, yeah, they've they, they've done a couple. Anyway, it's not important. I just <laughs> couldn't remember off the top of my head. Anyway, go Thanks. ahead. Yeah, other than that, like it was. Oh, Pizza Hut. Oh, Pizza Hut, that's right. It was delivered by Pizza Hut, as was the (laughs) show press conference. It was delivered by Pizza Hut. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wonderful. It's a wonderful restaurant. Yeah, yeah, nothing stood out to me on this show as far as like a wrestling match. I'll remember I thought Seth and Nakamura had as entertaining a WWE last man standing match as you're going to have. Probably, you know, you got your big stunt bumps through the tables and the brawling and all that, but it's it's this, it's this feud that, uh, as we talked about, has been going on since the Truman administration. So, um, was more just interested in seeing it end, which I, I guess it has because Seth's moving on to a new opponent. So, um, yeah, at least we, at least there was some finality uh, to it to this show, though. And uh, yeah, for whatever reason, Cody and Jay won the tag belts. I guess to fur- it furthers the the Judgment Day split storyline f- to uh, as they attempt to replic- replicate the faction drama story that worked so well for them on SmackDown over the last couple of years. That's certainly one possibility. I think it plays into a Cody ball line story as well at some point. Um, I think Cody and Roman is still the backup plan if Dwayne doesn't want to do Mania. Uh, <laughs> I think Cody Cody would certainly like to get to Cody versus Roman again at some point. And uh, we'll see. We'll see. They did uh, have Cole bring it up in the interview. Yeah. Oh, he's a loser just like his dad. Yeah. 
Happy yeah. birthday, Dusty. <laughs> swear. <laughs> I swear. Every time you think Vince's hands are off, little little things pop up where you go, oh, he still gets one or two in there. I got more to say about that in a second. Let's tie up the loose ends of the pay-per-view here. Mm. Rollins beat Nakamura. Uh, pretty good for a Nakamura match. <laughs> Pretty mid for Seth Rollins match, I would say. Hmm. Not mid. I don't know. I don't know. It 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 was over twenty eight minutes and it did, didn't do anything for me. But John Cena and LA Knight beat uh, the Bloodline. Um, they're behind LA Knight, and if you like John Cena selling in a cartoonish fashion, this match was for you. Io Sky retained her WWE Women's Championship over Asuka and Charlotte Flair. Always a shock when Charlotte doesn't win a title. <laughs> uh, Carlito uh, re-debuted and joined the Latino World Order. Uh, <laughs> what are we doing, man? <laughs> hey, Dad, he's a native of Puerto Rico. Mm-hmm. So there you go. And, I more uh, just mean hiring him in a general than... Oh yeah, I'm joining know. the Latino World Order. I don't know, no idea. It was over two years ago when he uh, they brought him in for a Royal Rumble, and he was absolutely and he came in with the uh, the action figure physique. Mm-hmm. And they're like, "Man, Carlito looks great. We got to get him back in back in the fold." And then they didn't do anything for a year and a half, <laughs> almost two years. No, over two years. Yeah. Then they brought him in at uh, the the. Puerto Rico pay-per-view they did in mm-hmm. uh, April or May this year and uh, he helped the Latino World Order there and um, and then they signed him and they didn't they didn't do anything with him and then you were we both well you really thought and I can't fault you for it because I thought similarly that he was going to get uh, the this year's Davy Boy Smith Jr. treatment <laughs> and he was going to get fired before he ever did anything yeah, but he survived the cuts, and then they finally debuted him. And uh, yeah, there you go. And then uh, we touched on Cody and Jay winning the uh, tag team titles. So there you go. That was uh, that was fascinating. A show we've already forgotten about. <laughs> um, we drive a car. <laughs> yes. Hey. I appreciate that. Well, it was in Indianapolis, which I guess was why they went with the uh, the car theme. Big uh, stock car and uh, what's the other one? Formula One uh, mm. race racing town. Big uh, Indy cars, what they used to call them. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they still do or not, but uh, b- big car city. And they had the two big Indy cars out on the um, on the stage. So. I wish they it had been more clear to me that it was in Indianapolis, uh, and that that's why they were using the car theme. But it's like uh, at least it kind of makes sense. Sure, sure. Why not? Okay. Oh, let's see here. Um, are you Manuel the um the CEO of of uh, Endeavor and uh, the TKO Group? Of that uh which uh WWE and UFC are part of. He did an interesting uh uh interview on um uh, Bloomberg Live. Mm. And um he talked a lot about WWE about UFC started to to do business in uh, in Saudi Arabia now and but th- the main takeaways from this were the he's there is he he insists that there's robust interest in the raw tv rights Mm -hmm. um which have not been uh renegotiated yet and um he was talking about how usa usa bought smackdown right they got a 40 percent increase for smackdown but uh they're moving moving off a network tv back to cable tv so to me kind of a push Mm -hmm. Um, and then he was talking about, um, they asked him, Hey, on September 20th, this stock was at about $106. 
uh, the next day, the SmackDown deal was announced and the stock price went down to about $96. So obviously, Wall Street thought, yeah, that's kind of a push or even a negative that, that they didn't get bigger than a 40% increase. Right. Today, the stock price is about $80. Mm-hmm. So that would that would uh, insinuate that the company has lost 20 eh, ish percent of its market cap over the last eh, three weeks. Not great. Not great. <laughs> but I asked him, why do you think that is? And he says, one, I think uh, they were disappointed with the 40 percent increase uh, Two, Vince has a, a an out in the deal where he his money is protected <laughs> and right. Wall Street doesn't like that. And then there are also stories this week. I don't remember if it was the torch. It was a site that occasionally gets things right, but usually just doesn't get anything at all. <laughs> um if I'm remembering correctly. And they were like uh Triple H is uh Endeavor has put Triple H in charge of creative. And uh, they really like what he does. And I don't know what Vince is doing, but he's the executive chairman. And that kind of fits with what we've been talking about on this show last week, where like, yes, Gargano and Champa came back and we're like, well, that's certainly not a Vince McMahon tag team. Mm-hmm. And uh, EO Sky is still the SmackDown Women's mm-hmm. Champion. And you're like, well, that's certainly not a Vince McMahon wrestler. Right. Bronson and Reed getting a little push on TV. Big Bronson Reed. <laughs> But there are still these little things like the fact that they can't say Bronson Reed without calling him big (laughs) Bronson Reed. And they can't say John Cena without calling him the greatest of all time, John Cena. Mm -hmm. And uh, the audacious Austin Theory. And (laughs) there are all of these little little taglines and uh, indicators that there is still a Vince McMahon influence on the product. And yet... The nuts and bolts of most of the things, JD McDonough being all over every show again. Mm. Uh, that uh, that Triple H is is calling the creative shots. What do you make of this? I don't know what to make of any of it. Yeah, well, that's the <laughs> that's that's the million dollar question. I think we'll, we might be coming back to this topic for for the rest of the year. Um, I mean, we kind of j- half joking, half serious. I think theorized. Well, Vince. Vince, even when he was fully in charge, was pretty hands off with the creative from September to January every year. So maybe he doesn't really care who's on the TV. He's just, you know, just tweaking big picture things. Sure. Um, But yeah, at the moment, as much as yeah, Raw is built around a lot of, you know, Gunther who depending on who you ask, was maybe headed for not such a great run under Vince before he was ousted originally. Um, you know, all, all the things we just, you just mentioned Gargano and Ciampa and, and big Brunson Reed and all Tegan the Knox. Yeah. Tegan Knox got a little like three week push leading up to her, you know, ultimately she lost to Becky, but they're that they're probably going to put her in a tag team with natty so she gets to join that proud uh yes she got on tv you're right that which is not nothing you know no. Nick, nikki cross can't sniff tvs i i guess i Lee got on tv this week too because she's going to wrestle becky next but yeah. um they uh, also can't put tegan on tv though without referring to her as the welsh firecracker <laughs> That's not a joke. <laughs> I know. It's amazing. <laughs> it's it's the funniest. That's a great one. Because it <laughs> like it's not even a liver alliterative or anything. Like there's nothing right. created. You just picked her nationality <laughs> and a random word. Yes. And a her... Welsh firecracker. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful. It doesn't rhyme. It doesn't, like there's nothing creative about it. It's just just nope. two just word salad <laughs> that Michael Cole shouts at us six times. <laughs> That's the best. Yeah, yeah. But to answer your to your answer your larger question, yeah, I think we have to file this under Will C over the next few weeks. It looks like they're doing war games again at Survivor Series. I think that's already been 
reported by uh, by Fightful or whoever else. And obviously, as we talked about, with you have Cody, Jay, Owens, and Sammy against the four Judgment Day guys. Like that's your that's your men's match, and then you just do whatever. You just put a bunch of random people together for the women's match. Um, probably something with uh, with uh, damage control. Sure. Um, so yeah, like you, uh, th- those are very much Paul Paul touches. <laughs> so it's it seems like a it's it seems more like right now it's a a Paul Levesque joint just featuring small appearances by Vince McMahon. Yeah, that's the feel. Uh, you know, Paul's the penciler. Maybe Vince is the the colorist or something like that to to mix metaphors. But um, yeah, it's it that's. Well, like I said, I think where we'll really see who gets who gets final say is when it's time for the rumble and all those all those big moves going into mania. Yeah, that's certainly uh, certainly something to keep an eye on. The Tuesday Night War uh, ruined a lot of people's brains this week. <laughs> Perhaps chief among them, uh, AEW's GM Tony Khan, who uh, tweeted like a um, early 2000s wrestling message board uh, poster this week, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. just going off, just absolutely going off. Um, it was really fun Monday night during Raw when uh, WWE would announce something on Raw and then Tony would come back and announce something on Twitter. Um, as these two sides were jockeying before NXT and Dynamite went head to head on Tuesday night, WWE announced that they were going uh, 30 minutes commercial free to start the show. Mm-hmm. And Tony comes back and he goes, uh, we are also 30 minutes commercial free to start the show. <laughs> and then uh, WWE is like, uh, we're... I don't even know if WWE announced an overrun. I would assume they did. Because Tony was like, guess what? We're going to have an overrun also. Mm-hmm. And um, he, uh, I guess it was a Curb Your Enthusiasm joke that's over my head. I don't understand. Called uh, Triple H, insinuated the Triple H and or Shawn Michaels were bald assholes. Which, uh, in know. a photo. <laughs> hey, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that he's not far off on that. You know? You're right. Glass hassles and all that, but you know, sure. not not technically inaccurate, most likely. Sure. Sure. Depends on uh depends on a lot of things. Uh <laughs> I don't know. I met Shawn Michaels and I wouldn't say he was the friendliest guy and I was paying to meet him. <laughs> sure, sure. Um all right. <laughs> I mean, I I I I mean you could there's a lot of people who would say <laughs> Shawn Michaels wasn't the friendliest guy, even <laughs> uh, even after his uh, his life changed. Uh, even after he found the Lord. Yes, there are there. You can still find plenty of stories about him. Uh, you know, not always being the the friendliest chap, but that doesn't mean you know we all we all have bad days. You know, it doesn't mean doesn't mean he's a he's an evil person or anything. Right, 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 right. And uh, we know that some of this is Tony Khan's shtick. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been a while since we've seen him do this shtick uh, in public, I guess. But he talks about um, being a challenger brand and being the Pepsi to WWE's Coke and how you need to do things to differentiate you, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And th- but this is the first evidence that we've seen of that in public in quite a while. And then... Um, uh, NXT, th- they thumped Dynamite in total viewers, and the demo was close, but they also beat them in the demo. And I didn't know what the demo was going to be. I thought NXT would do a million, and uh, Dynamite would do uh, low 600s, and NXT averaged 921, 921,000 viewers, and Dynamite averaged 609,000 viewers. So I wasn't that far off. Yeah, the demo. I don't know if I could have predicted the demo uh, if you put a gun to my head, but uh, 
point three zero to point two six. Uh, a lot of people watching wrestling on a t- on a random Tuesday night, um, and uh, Dynamite did stuff, and NXT ran a bunch of main roster stars out there, and <laughs> Tony Khan pointed out on Thursday this week, hey, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but uh, John Cena and The Undertaker, for the first time in their long, illustrious careers, appeared on a WWE show with less than a million viewers. The streak is over. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, on one hand, he's not wrong. Uh, WWE broke out two of their biggest and best of all time in The Undertaker and John Cena mm-hmm. to get a, a narrow demo win over um, an AEW Dynamite show headlined by uh, Edge's in ring debut. But uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I feel is. like everybody. Because the demo was close enough, Tony can thump his chest and say, we went on a night that's not our night, and we were competitive, and we had a better show, and so we won. Everybody wins. Right. Everyone can claim some kind of victory here. Right. And and he can also, and as a and if he wants to be a sore loser on the fact that he did ultimately lose, he can also point out, well, it took Cody Rhodes and John Cena and The Undertaker and all these all these main roster people just to narrowly beat us in the demo. And and I, I mean it was a sizable victory in total viewership, so that's not nothing, but yeah, so to- yeah, so everybody can, you know, WWE can rightfully claim claim full and total victory, and Tony can can claim it was still a win for AEW because they were competitive in what counts, and you know, they had a better show. If you think they had a better show, so you know, and then he can he can just keep posting about it. So <laughs> I um. I don't know if you want to. I mean, WWE is selling out shows. Yeah. Um, domestically, uh, AEW just set the all time attendance record internationally, mm-hmm. uh, but is not doing very well domestically mm-hmm. in terms of uh, people going to their shows. They're doing fine on television, uh, fine to good on television. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't think AEW is in any danger of going anywhere for the next six years, right? Because they're going to get a TV right. contract extension probably of five years next year. And that should be announced anytime in the next, you know, 14 months or whatever. They'll, they'll be fine. They're not going anywhere. WWE is hot. Uh, it was it was pointed out in the Observer uh, last week. There are some signs if you look at advances for like the uh, December. I don't think all the holiday tour shows have gone on sale yet. I think they've mm-hmm. some have been on pre sales. But Dave was like, uh, "There's some signs here that the WWE um, hot streak at the box office is kind of there's some the first signs like all year of." the market being a little soft mm. and I don't, I don't know what that means. I think they're still doing quite well. <laughs> they seem to be at least for, for television. I haven't, I don't know about like house show attendance, but I think even their house shows have been, been great. So they sold out, they were on a stretch where they sold out like a weekend of, I mean, they don't run the, the split house show tours very much anymore. It's usually just right. um one house show tour a weekend and they don't run on, on pay per view weekends. And um, for like two weekends ago, so two weekends ago, they sold out a domestic house show, and it was the first time they'd done it in two months. But prior to that, when was the last time that they were selling out domestic house shows? Nineteen ninety nine, two thousand. I mean, seriously. Yeah, no, you're not wrong. I like, guess yeah. it's, it's been that long, and TV tapings are selling out, and the pay per view this past weekend sold out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, and um, Raw was damn close to selling out on Monday if it didn't sell out. And yeah, so I don't know. I, I What AEW has done should be commended. And uh, they're not in any danger of going anywhere for 
the foreseeable future. But uh, they are number two. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's which is fine. Right. It's yeah. It's (laughs) it's good that there is a viable number two where people can go to make money and be seen by, you know, whatever. 750 to 900,000 people every week. That's good. Yes. It's good and fine that that happens. And, you know, if uh, who knows, like it's one of those things we, it's been talked about in a million different ways by a million different people over the years. Like when you're hot, you really can't do anything wrong. And when you're cold, which AW feels cold right now, uh, Sometimes you can't do anything right. Even when you load up a big show, you still only end up drawing, you know, 2,300 people or whatever, whoever that was there in Kansas City or wherever they were on, on Wednesday. Um, doesn't mean, you know, the sh- every show they've done for the last six months or whatever domestically has been bad. It's just right now they're not hot. So, um, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the, did you uh I know you were traveling this week. Did you hmm. see Dynamite? Yes, I, I watched that when I got home uh this afternoon. Uh Cheetah won the title back. She Surprising. Did. Yeah. Two uh, two surprise title changes on that show, I would say. Yeah, Orange beat uh beat Phoenix for the international title. Uh he wasn't originally scheduled for the match, but John Moxley still isn't cleared. Mm-hmm. Moxley got a concussion almost a month ago and still hasn't hasn't been cleared that's uh concerning yeah he's 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 cleared enough to travel because <laughs> he he and renee did some big indie show over the weekend sammy callahan's uh indie yeah. yeah um and obviously he was at the pay-per-view doing commentary and stuff but um so i guess it's not <laughs> it's just a no bumps right now <laughs> It's not a Mick Foley, you can't go on roller coaster situation. Right. <laughs> it's, right. it's not an Adam Cole. You level. can't fly situation. Right. right. Uh it's just, yeah, don't uh don't 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 take bumps. No. Uh Adam Copeland and the Luchasaurus <laughs> had a uh the most uh Adam Copeland match you've ever seen. <laughs> they did the double big boot spot, man. <laughs> Tell you what, man. I, I got a lot of respect for for uh, for Adam Copeland, mm-hmm. and he can do whatever he wants. Yeah, famously, you um, you <laughs> would like to be best friends with him and his wife. Yeah, I, I think they're cool. I think they're good people. <laughs> Despite a lot of evidence that. <laughs> <laughs> well, he we're all young once, you know. Yeah, Adam didn't take marriage fails too seriously for a couple <laughs> for a couple decades there, but uh-huh, hey, uh-huh. now he's old and he's married and he's settled down. I think mm-hmm. they're good people. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, but uh, boy, as a wrestler, mm. <laughs> I've seen all he has to offer. <laughs> yeah, I I was thinking about that when they announced his first match would be with the Luchasaurus. <laughs> first of all, what a rib on on me personally. Sure, but uh, second is like you know if they had put him in the ring with Nick Wayne. Like that would have been mildly interesting to me because it's like this severely Will Osprey pilled, like young flippy kid. Yes. Wrestling the gritty old Adam, Adam Copeland could have been interesting. Sure. But instead, they put him in there with like the guy outside of Paul White that he was most likely to have like the most WWE match. I mean, like they did some stuff. Like, I mean, he did like a running spear off of the steps he jumped off the apron he landed on the steps and then jumped off there like they did some 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 wacky stuff in it um it wasn't like a terrible match or anything it was just it was like watching edge versus kane from a 2007 (laughs) smackdown like yeah yeah um jay white beat a beat uh hangman out of page on that show um hangman uh peed in someone's cheerios uh he's lost Virtually every match since he resigned with the company, mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, they gave him an out here. He like he got screwed by the the ass boys, but um, and I, Chris Nana. Yeah, I don't know why you would do that. I don't know why Jay White just can't beat guys on his way to challenging for the world title. But there you go. People got big mad um, that uh, they did what some people viewed as an anti-Semitic angle. Mm. 
on Dynamite where Juice Robinson was going to hit uh, MJF with quarter, something that the podcasters suggested ha- what should happen months ago. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, there's just a lot of very painful online discourse about this. Um, it's not for me to decide whether or not that angle is anti-Semitic. Um, MJF is Jewish. If he suggested that they do it, maybe his sensibilities are not those of the Jewish community at large. Right. It's not for- not my not my place to say (laughs) yeah like i mean i feel like this this is maybe this isn't a perfect analogy but yeah i felt about this the same way i kind of felt about like um when they invoked like charlotte flair's dead brother um uh where i go well i don't really care to see that on my silly fake wrestling show no it's not fun anymore no um but like you can only but obviously the person who was in the angle signed you would assume signed off on it um so unless mjf comes out and said i didn't want to do that and i was forced to do it i again i think every everyone is completely within their rights to go i didn't like that i don't want to see it on the silly the silly fake wrestling show and i like i said i i I agree. <laughs> but um, as far as like, if it's a larger moral or like cultural issue, I think that is, as you said, probably not for you or I to say. For sure. Um, they keep, they have managed to keep alive the uh, who attacked um, Jay White storyline in that they have mentioned it a few times, but mm-hmm. I have no faith whatsoever. that They're going to pay this off. <laughs> Like, uh, you'd think they have to at least do like the next maybe the the devil mask doesn't unmask but you got to do something with this at the pay-per-view match i would hope i would hope i hope i would hope that this angle doesn't get forgotten <laughs> <laughs> also at that show uh brian danielson uh beat Swerve strickland to become the number one contender of the tnt championship i think people some people were upset that swerve lost uh to which i would say um this is Danielson's last year as a full timer. Do you really think he's going to do a job for Swerve Strickland? Uh, no, he's winning every match. Yeah, and also like one, he's a heel. It's okay if heels lose sometimes. Yes, and he was also distracted by Hangman coming down and preventing his cheating. So they gave him an out too. So it's not as if he just. And yes, he lost to Brian Danielson. He didn't lose to Billy Gunn. You know, right. yeah, and uh, Chris Jericho did his version of Hulk Hogan putting over Goldberg at the Georgia Dome on four days' notice <laughs> in front of all the TAT executives in 1998. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chris Jericho let Powerhouse Hobbs squash him, so it was, it's pretty, yeah, it was definitive. Um, as always, when Jericho does a job, uh, the follow up <laughs> for what happens after. He does the job will be interesting to see. But yeah, as far as it, it's like Jericho put him in the walls. Powerhouse Hobbs powered out of it and hit him with the world's strongest slam twice and pinned him. So it was it was it was very decisive. Hey, uh, Wardlow came back on the show again and uh, power bombed Evan Bourne to death. <laughs> uh, yeah, what, 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 are we, what are we doing with this guy again? No earthly idea. No idea whatsoever. Oh, you know what? There's lore. You know what? I saw this on Twitter this week. He wrote MJF on his wrist tape. Oh, dear God. So maybe he's going to... They got probably an, at least one TV title defense for Max after the pay-per-view this year. In uh, in December, they do Winter is Coming or whatever again this <laughs> December. So maybe that's maybe they'll do MJF with Wardlow as a, as a big heel this time. So they've already done a pay-per-view this month. They have full gear for November, and then they have a hold on a date for a... a, uh, What day of the week is that? Saturday, December 30th. They have a hold on Mm. a date for a December 30th (laughs) pay-per-view. That's just New Year's weekend, sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, (laughs) mm -hmm. Why the hell not? (laughs) Let's just do it again. Let's just keep doing it. Uh, TV this weekend, uh, Christian Cage and Brian Danielson for the TNT title on Collision. And 
I think they announced something else for uh, Samoa Joe and Willie Mack for the ROH World Television Championship mm-hmm. is also set for uh, this week's uh, AEW Collision. And then uh, Raw on Monday has two title matches. They have uh, an intercontinental title match with Gunther defending against uh, Big Bronson Reed, the new number one contender. How could I forget? <laughs> And uh, what's the other title match on Raw coming up? Uh, it's the rematch from the pay per view, right? It's Cody and Jay against the Judgment Day boys. That's correct. The tag team titles also set our uh, Piper Niven versus Natalia, Rhea Ripley versus Shayna Baszler, and Shinsuke Nakamura and Ricochet falls count anywhere. So there you go. Uh, Roman Reigns returns to SmackDown this Friday. We'll figure out who he's going to be wrestling at uh, the Crown Jewel pay-per-view coming up the first Saturday in November. As you brought up earlier, Seth Rollins will be defending the other world title on that show against Drew McIntyre, who is uh, executing one of the slowest heel turns in history. (laughs) This guy has been turning heel on the new day for eight weeks and uh, maybe longer. Hang on. He came back like the first week of July. Yeah, so, he did. He did a for, SummerSlam program <laughs> where he really wasn't on TV at all. Three months. This has been going on for three months. Um, still hasn't fully turned heel. It's very clear he's turning heel. I would say so. Yeah, he let Seth get beat up on uh, on Raw on Monday until it looked like Priest was going to cash in, and then he intervened, so Priest couldn't win the title before he got a chance to challenge for it. I mean, it's a fine story to tell. It's just like, let's get on with it, you know? Yeah. It's a little bit uh, little molasses-like. And, like, what do you do do with him once you turn him heel? Like, Well, I think that's what he's thinking, too, you know? Yeah. (laughs) Other than maybe you just beat him because he hasn't resigned or whatever. Um, But, I mean, this is a way to probably get you to December because you figure... Maybe he's going to lose to Seth at the Crown Jewel show, and then maybe he does the full deal turn the next night uh, or whenever. I don't know what day, day of the week those shows are on anymore, but yeah. the next Raw. Um, right. And uh, and then you Survivor Series is War Games, so you get a month off from having to book any storylines. And then in December, if they do it, they do a pay per view. That's that's your December matches. You do you do heal uh, Drew and, and Seth. Yeah, it's totally fine. Um, all right. Well, let's see here. Um, we have uh, covered pretty much everything. Oh, the Tokyo Dome event is official for January. It's going to be Diesel. I mean, uh, Sonata <laughs> again, defending against Tetsuya Naito. I'm Bret Hart. I mean, Tetsuya Naito <laughs> getting one last. Uh, to me, it's very clear. It's like, all right, Naito, this is your gold watch run. You won the G1. Um, you get one more, and uh, so you know, they built up Tanahashi for that one last run against uh, when Omega was leaving, yes, and that was like the biggest crowd they had at a Tokyo Dome in like five years at that point, yes. So maybe that'll work to New Japan's favor, uh, for if they if they build up uh, this Naito run as his his last chance to main event the dome, and you know, and Naito is, I don't get it because I don't live there, but Naito is super over in Japan. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I was going to say with the, the G1, the, the semifinals and finals where he wrestled Osprey and Okada. Um, yeah, just crowd was just molten for yeah. him in a way that you really haven't heard New Japan crowds since uh, before they were only allowed to clap. <laughs> Yes, for two years, um, they were just so into Naito winning. They were living and dying on Naito winning that tournament. So, yeah, like uh, if there's a time where he still can at least go in the big matches, this is probably the time to do it or at least try it out. Sure. And uh, depending on who you listen to, either CM Punk was in talks with WWE and they decided not to hire him or WWE and CM Punk were never in talks and WWE decided not to hire him. So Phil's Phil's camp. Yes. Told everyone (laughs) that would listen that they were in talks. Yes. This is my view and I could be wrong. Sure. And that was either 
only a little bit true or perhaps not true at all to try to drum up excitement about the idea of Phil returning yes. to WWE in Chicago for Survivor Series. Yes. And as of now, and this could just be them denying it because they want it to be a surprise, but WWE is categorically denying that they have even had a conversation with the man. So yeah, we'll see. Um. I would say this. Nick Khan and CM Punk have mutual friends. Sure. I would not be shocked whatsoever if there were feelers put out either way. And um, um, I think the people that talk to Fightful (laughs) are not necessarily Nick Khan. And I think the people I think the people that talk to the Dave Meltzer side are pretty well connected to Nick Khan. Let's put it that way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> are you, are you picking up what I'm putting down? Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so it's possible that um, no one reported anything incorrectly here. Sure. Everything that was reported could be true. Mm-hmm. As is often the case with stories <laughs> involving CM Punk. Sure. It's also possible that he manipulated a, a, at least one reporter. <laughs> it's possible that he manipulated multiple reporters. Mm-hmm. I mean, I I yet to see any evidence that Phil would ever try to do something like that. But, um, you know, there's a first time for everything, I suppose. <laughs> it's like, hey, that's just not that's not the guy I know. <laughs> He's not that sort of guy. He would never do that to himself. Right. All right. Well, we've covered everything in then so uh, anything else? No, I think that covers it. All right. Let's get out of here. Until next time, everyone. I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. We'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. I think Spirit is the worst airline I've ever, I've ever flown. Oh, really? Okay, that's... I'll just say, I they did get the only thing they got me is that I paid like ten. I think I paid like nineteen dollars both ways to pick my seat, so okay. I picked an aisle. Okay. Um, because I was like looking at, it. I was like, that's that's the only way this could be. This could be comfortable for me, um, other than paying like the sixty dollars or whatever to fly in an exit row or. Sure. Or whatever. So it's like so it wasn't completely miserable. Um it if I was in a middle seat or something, it probably would have been, but yeah, that's understandable. And uh the new Fraser is out today, and I'm pleased to report that they seem to have taken the direction that uh, you suggested and tried to make it about the uh I forget how you I believe I said his cool, sexy, gay son, Fraser Jr., but he's not gay, right? Correct. Okay, but but his his cool, sexy son. Yeah, yeah. He's a firefighter. (laughs) Fraser Um, Jr. I have yet to watch the shows yet. Um, The reviews I've read, the the review, the TV reviewer that I uh, trust the most was like, uh, this is bad, and there are multiple things that when you're watching the shows that will be like, um, did they even watch the original? Like, why Ooh. are they ignoring the lore <laughs> from, from the, uh, from the original series? Um, that pisses me off. It's like, if it was just bad on its own, right. Okay. Uh, you know, you kind of expect that and you kind of feel like, yeah, this is the old man, uh, making a cash grab here and mm-hmm. whatever, whatever. But if it's bad and it just ignores the original, the source material, Mm -hmm. that's unforgivable. (laughs) Yeah. Well, also because with all of these reboots, like who is it for? 
It's for right. people that like original <laughs> Frasier, original right. recipe Frasier. <laughs> and what, like, those are the only people you can't, like, <laughs> right. Like, people that haven't seen Frasier aren't rushing to, to subscribe to Paramount Plus to watch no. this new. It's people that love that <laughs> show and still watch it all the time. Every day of their lives. <laughs> <laughs> Big phrase heads out there. And <laughs> and you're just yeah, if you're just if you're just spinning in, in their in their faces, that seems like a really like wrong foot to get off on. Like <laughs> like it feels like this should be a <laughs> it should be a lore show. It should be a show that's full <laughs> of references to the old thing. Yes. The the key one that I read about is that, okay, so they set this in Boston, which is where Cheers was set, and which is where the the character was first written in, right? To like season three or four of Cheers, and it's like, okay, if you want to set it in Boston, you have to at least address why he doesn't stop by Cheers, right? Yes, <laughs> it's like whether it's it's closed for renovations, right? Whether it's the characters are on vacation, right? Like just Head dance give, instead, right? Right. Give us a reason. That's right. it. And it's like even if in real life, on the fr- the the first Frasier run, once a season they would have a Cheers character make a cameo, or mm-hmm. they would do an episode where he goes back to Boston for a week, or the car- a Cheers character comes to visit him for a week. It's like right. even even if Ted Danson doesn't want to put on the toupee. <laughs> and and be and be the cheers guy one more time. You have to address why he's in Boston and he's at another bar and not cheers. Right. <laughs> and they don't do that. That's wild. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, what are you doing? <laughs> anyway, there you go. Uh, well, I mean, for your sake, I hope it's not <laughs> a complete piss on the grave cash sure. grab, but yeah, that doesn't that doesn't bode well. No. Well, anyway, I can't wait to watch it. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe there's a little bit of the old magic in in the old because it's just him, right? Like it's not any of the other original cast. Uh, They have uh, like his producer, Roz, is going to do a uh, cameo. Okay. During an episode, but like Niles doesn't do a cameo. Daphne doesn't do a cameo. The father passed away. Right. So, uh, yeah, just just one cameo, I think. But uh as uh, to quote my uh, soul brother slash adopted dad, Brandon Hyde, uh, I'll continue to watch, but I'm going to watch a little irritated. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still pissed. <laughs> I'm still pissed. I'm going to watch a little irritated. <laughs> I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch it all. <laughs> I'm yeah. going to be a little irritated. What a <laughs> quote. Yeah, it's great. I try to keep on keeping on.